When I'd finished my book on siblings, my dearest enemy, my dangerous friend, I was starting to think about writing a book about lying. But those were in the days of that great friendship between Tony Blair and George Bush. And uh, there seemed to be a lot of examples of lies. But what happened was that I wanted then to write a book about what Dawkins was talking about. You know, in his book, The, uh, the God Delusion, he asked the rhetorical question, why do people believe this? How can anybody be so stupid as to believe this? And I decided to treat that as a serious question, not a rhetorical question. So what should I believe is about why people hold beliefs about the nature of death and the purpose of life. We all have beliefs about them, but uh, no two people ever have exactly the same beliefs. When I completed that book, I had an interesting time meeting with the godly. And then I had some peculiar experiences, most notably with the BBC, where one of the producers in the religion and ethics department of the BBC had organised for me to be uh, interviewed at length by John McCarthy. This producer didn't broadcast the interview, but she did take one set of words that were recorded and doctor it so that what was broadcast was me apparently saying the opposite of what I'd said. And all of this is, I've, I have put on my, my website. Meeting people who were not telling the truth and they were people I expected to be truthful. They had standards to maintain. So. I am working on a new book that I call Why We Lie. This book gets bigger and bigger because what's happened since Blair and Bush disappeared is that we're now living in a different world. For the financial crash, that there's been nothing like it since the Depression. And you have to be as old as me to remember that depression in the 1930s. It was terrible. What's also happened is it's incontrovertible that climate change is happening, and it's happening a lot faster than scientists had predicted. Yet, we have, um, just this week, the um, oil in, in the States, Obama is hoping to get through Congress a bill on climate change. All the scientists say it's not, you know, it's not good enough. The levels that we're, they're supposed to reach by 2020 just don't go far enough for what is needed now. But in the States, the heads of the oil industries, the coal industries, all getting together to Build, put together a war budget to fight the bill. Don't, don't these men have children? Can't you see what's happening? But this is climate change denial, which is a lie. And the thing with lies is it's very easy to construct a lie because a lie is just a fantasy. But the interesting thing about lies is you lie for a reason, whereas you can tell the truth or seek out the truth for no particular reason at all, except it'd be interesting to know. You can see that's a huge area of investigation. Then there's a great difficulty that we have in just being able to tell what the truth is. Now, in all of my books, I've written about how we are incapable of seeing reality directly. You know, what you're seeing in this room isn't reality. What you're seeing is a picture of this room that your brain has created, and that's inside your head. 
and then your brain plays a trick on you and persuades you that you're in the middle of the picture and it's all around you. And that's happening to each of you now. If we could take these pictures out of our heads and hang them up round the wall, we'd see that no two are the same. No two people ever see anything in exactly the same way. Now, when I first started to write, I wasn't able to put that together in those words because uh, neuroscientists weren't doing that kind of work. But over the last 10, 15 years, there's been an enormous amount of work done on looking at the way our brain creates the pictures of what we see, looking at how we learn. So we know now an enormous amount more than we knew 20 years ago. But the more neuroscientists find out about the way we see, the way we perceive the world, the more complicated it becomes. You know, you come to realise it is very, very difficult to know exactly, you really can't know exactly, but to get close to what is actually going on. So just from, you know, what sort of weather is it, looking out the window, just to arrive at some reasonable um, picture of the weather and what it's going to be. You know, we're not terribly well equipped to do that because everything we know is a theory and everything we know is a probability. You know, there is a probability that tomorrow's weather will be much like today's. But of course, there could be a change in the pressure over this part of England, and it could be quite a nice day. So what are the probabilities? So when you listen to the weather forecast tonight, you're not being told what it is going to be, you're being told what the probabilities are of what it's going to be. And that's how we operate as human beings. But telling a lie, that's easy. You only just have to make up a fantasy. It doesn't have to have any relationship to the, to the truth or the world or anything. This means that it's very hard sometimes to distinguish whether a person is telling you something that's wrong because the person is ignorant or whether the person is lying. That's a very tricky decision to make sometimes. So in Why We Lie, I start off with quite a long chapter about how difficult it is to know what the truth is. And then the second chapter is about why lying is so important to us. And we have lots of um, reasons for lying, but if you examine these reasons, if you go through that process of questioning called laddering, if you go through that process, whatever lie you tell, you, you are telling the lie in order to preserve your sense of being a person. You know, you don't casually say to a friend, oh, I really like your, your new dress, when you don't. You're lying because you don't want your friend to get upset. You don't want your friend to dislike you. And it would be terrible if you felt that people disliked you or terrible for you when people get upset and it's all rather chaotic. So we always have that reason for lying, that we're trying to hold ourselves together as a person.